Steph Anderson Jr. Oh, Steph Hey man, hey man, let's give the Lord a praise offering. Hey man, great is the Lord and great is in his trade. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. And the good. See, no, 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 that's been reviewed this morning. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Spirit of living God, have your way today. Have your way, Lord. Bound the hand of the enemy. The Lord, and let love flow from breast to breast, Lord. From heart to heart tonight, this afternoon, Lord. Bless us, God, above and beyond our expectation. Lord God, bound the enemy as we proclaim your word today. Let self decrease, but let that spirit increase in our hearts. Lord God, we'll give your name the praise and all the glory and honor shall be thine, for we ask it in Christ's name and for his grace we pray. Let the church say amen. Amen again. One for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> amen. If you, amen. Go shake a neighbor hand. Amen. Shake your neighbor hand. It's just good to be here. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For my feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. There's no better place to be than in the house of God. No better place to be because when you come to the house of God, he laid low in Zion just to bless the needy soul. And God knows our soul do need a blessing. Amen. And it's there needed right away. And then we truly thank God. We give honor to God and to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to my pastor, our Pastor Anderson. Amen. Thank God for Amen. Amen. You know what? It's, it's funny, right? Someone saying, sang a song. And check this out. It says, You are the sunshine of my life. Yeah. That's why I always stay around. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you are the apple of my eye. But he was blind though, right? <laughs> you have to either stop it up in it. A blind man sang that. Stevie Wonder, right? Amen. And love, my love for you, amen, is great. I thank God that he blessed me to have her in my life for the past 30, 32 years, 30 years of being married, two, two years of courtship. And it, it seemed like this went so quickly. We could do it all over again. And we actually thank God just, just for my wife, for my family. I thank God also for everyone on the sound of our voice. Thank God for Shiloh, new Shiloh being in the house today. We love each and every one of you. We may not have the opportunity all the time to tell you, but we do love you and we appreciate you. We appreciate your support, your prayers, your finances, just for being there for us. Amen. Thank God for our oh, Ellis. You know, I was just thinking about you the other day. I was reading this book, and it says, of the people who had the most influence in your life, and your name was one at the top of the list. Through him, through Ellis, we was, um, I used to be his assistant supervisor. He was my, he was my boss. And, um, but I was young, and we was in a really, really hostile environment as far as the work, workplace. But he knew how to deal with them guys. And by me being a young Christian, I didn't really know how to deal, deal with these guys. And I learned how to deal with men by working under his supervision. You know, we, we had the best yards in the highway division. And when we, and when we left the highway division, the dumb places, that, that unit had not been the same sets. Amen. Because of our absence. But at the same token, I learned how to treat men. I learned that one thing men want, and um, I'm talking about men, but people and people in general, men in Pacific, be, to be Pacific, men want to be treated as men, and they want to be treated fairly. That's what I learned from Ellis, and I thank God that he, that he put you in my life. It made you a very important part of my life because if he wasn't in that place at that time, them guys would have ate me up because I was like a new a new Christian and and just trying to serve God with all my heart. 
But a lot of times you serve God with all your heart. Sometimes you need knowledge too, because if you don't have that knowledge, you're going you're gonna to mess up a lot of things. And, and, and look, right, and that's what I was able to pick up from him. And uh, uh, because our people pass because of lack of knowledge. So I, I thank God that, Lord, he put people in your life. It's like God posts as you go along. Amen. And of course, Apostle Willis was a part of that. God posts, um, uh, Bishop Moore, and, and different ones. As I just wrote down and just thought about my life, how God, he transforms your life and brings you into your, into your present destiny. So we just do thank God for everything that's been said and done. Thank God for the saints of God. We thank God also for those who, who celebrated with us our anniversary. We really appreciate it. Amen. Amen. Our sons and daughters in the gospel, you know, that, not to put anyone else down, but we, let me say, let make known these deeds amongst your people. And if you give a disciple a war, cold cup of water in the name of the disciple, you'll never lose your reward. So what, when you do services unto God's people, unto, you're doing it as unto God. And I'm so glad, I am so glad and so grateful that God will never forget our labor of love. We forget, but God will never forget. And that's the good thing. And whatever we do, we want to always do to the glory and honor of God. Amen. We want to take your heart to the word today, and we pray that God would give you a word uh, that could encourage your heart. It's going to be taken from two texts today, I'm, two scriptures, verses I'm going to be dealing with. One is 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, and I believe it's the 13th verse, and also 1 John 3 and 2. That's what we're going to be taking you to on the day. 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter. I'm sorry, St. Matthew's, the 16th chapter, and the 13th verse. Sixteenth chapter and the thirteenth verse of the book of Saint Matthews. Sixteen and thirteen. And when you find it reads as thus <clears throat> let us rest upon our feet for the reading of his word. Pray for us. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the son of man, am. And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus to Christ. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word, and you can be seated in the presence of God. Amen. If I were used for a topic or a subject on this morning, it would be identity crisis. Identity crisis. We're living in a time where folks, where we don't know who we are. And until you know who you are, Amen. You cannot really ever come into your, 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 your purpose or your destiny if you don't know who you are. Now, for three years, for the most part, Jesus was walking with his disciples and teaching them and working miracles and so forth and so on. But he asked his disciples the question, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And, and the Bible says that Peter, he's being the spokesman of the 12 apostles, he stood up and said that thou art the Christ, thou art the anointed one, thou art the Messiah, thou art not only that, you are the son 
of the living God. In other words, he was he was a, he, he was pronouncing to the church Christ's deity that he was God in flesh, reconciling the world back unto himself. Amen. And and then God, then Jesus said unto him that you are blessed, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood has not revealed this unto thee, but my father, just that quick, my God, God just gave him the word, uh, gave him a rain of word of who Jesus is. He says, flesh and blood have not revealed this unto thee, but my father, which is in heaven, has revealed unto you, Peter, my true identity. Once God reveals himself unto you, my God, it'll make a change in your life. Paul said that I might know him in the fellowship of his suffering and in the power of his resurrection, that I might be made conformable unto his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Oh, God, that I might know who Jesus is. They used to sing a song, everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright and morning star. He's the precious rose of Sharon. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. But we're living in a time where folks don't know who Jesus is. They know what church is. They know how to do a church thing, but they really don't know Jesus. You can be with somebody and really not know them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. And a lot of folks are living with folks that they really don't know. And the worst thing about it, when you don't know yourself, when you don't know who you are, you don't know whose you are, and you don't know your purpose and your destiny. It's a sad thing when you don't know. And a lot of times what happens, beloved, because we don't know who we are, we begin to act strangely. <laughs> yes, we begin to act strangely. We begin to do things that really, really is out of character. But I've come to find out that because I do certain things, it doesn't mean that's who I am. Now, we heard a saying, if you walk like a duck and you talk like a duck, you must be a duck. I'm here to refute that today. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because cause every cause, cause just because I do certain things and I act certain way, that don't mean that's who I am. I may be acting that way because I don't know who I am. You know the story about the ugly duckling. I know some of us may know that story. <laughs> How he was, the ugly duckling with all these beautiful ducks that were in the pond and some was quacking one way and some was quacking the other way. Amen. And this ugly duckling wanted to know why did he look like the other ducklings? You know, because as he was grown up, he was just ugly. He wasn't fit then. But as the story goes on and unfolds, it reveals unto us that he became a beautiful swan. He became beautiful, more, more beautiful than the other ducks. So really, he wasn't an ugly duckling. He was a, he was a swan that was in trans, 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 transition. He was being transformed. Yeah, yeah, but a lot of times we, 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 we get complacent and we think, you know, we, we want to, in order to fit in, we begin to act like other folks act. We begin to talk like other folks talk. We begin to act like other folks act. But that's not who really, who, who we are. Who do men say that you are? My God, if, if, if God would bless me to reveal to you who you are today in Christ Jesus, I guarantee you today that you'll leave this place another way and that your life will never be the same. No, 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 no. First, I, first I want to know Jesus because once I connect with him, he reveals to me who I, who I am. Yeah, once I connect my source with my power, with my strength, he reveals to me what I'm supposed to be doing. Now, now as I was coming down, growing up, you know, I used to steal cars. I used to snatch pocketbooks. I used to do strong long robberies. I, robberies. I used to sell drugs. I used to try to be a so-called pimp, but that's not who I was. No, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But the penal system would try to tell me that I was a thief and a liar. That's what I done, but that's not who. Hiya. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Out there getting one, out there breaking my mother's heart. You know, giving my family all kind of headaches. That's what I done, but that's not who I was. I was an ugly duckling and going through my transformation. Uh -huh. It's good to know who you are and whose you are today. When God made man, God gave man identity. Hiya! God made man in his image. That's who I am. And he made him in his likeness. Then God said something after he created man. When he created the earth, when he created the stars, when he created the, 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 the cattle, he said it was good. But when he got to man and made man in his image and in his likeness, God said it was very good. That's who I am. I'm something good that God created. You are something good that God created. God said that is very good. God said this thing. If you, if you listen to the TV and say you're very bad, you are never amount to anything. You'll always be in poverty. You'll always be poor. You'll always be criminals. If you listen to the news, if you listen to the rap sessions, to the rap music, you bees and you H's, you dogs and you all of this. But that's not who we are. <laughs> the Bible says that we are more than talking with us to him that loved us. God gave us our identity. And once you realize who you are, you can begin to walk in that anointing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you do. Once you know who you are, you can walk in that anointing freely without any bondage. How are you? Yes, sir. God gave Adam identity. He breathed into the nostril of man. The man became a living soul. I'm a soul man living in an earthly body. This earth, this earthly body in and in, 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 in tunes, should I say, my God, in case my soul man. This is why my soul cries out to God. Not my body. But my soul cries out to God. That's what's going to live on forever. My God, I'm more than a human being. I'm a soul man. I'm a, I'm a superhuman because God lives with inside of us. We're more than conquerors through him that loved us. Oh, yeah, you look at Clark Kent and Superman. Was he Clark Kent or was he Superman? Was he Superman or was he Clark Kent? Kent, who was he? Amen. And I'm here to say today, beloved, that I'm a child of a king. I'm a son of God. And First John 3 and 2 says, beloved, now we are. Right now, my God, we are the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we do know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. It didn't say that I will be a son of God, but right now I am a son of God. God gave Adam identity. He gave him a name. He called him Adam, one that comes from the earth. My God, God, he named us. He created us after his image. And after his likeness, and I'm here to tell you today that God didn't make any trash. He didn't make any trash. He didn't make any failures. Hallelujah! My God, my God, my God. In the book of St. Matthew, I believe it's the fourth chapter, when Jesus came off his 40-day fast, and we're going to be fasting and watch madness this next month. The church is going to go mad. Mad for Jesus. Remember that commercial? I'm cuckoo for Cocoa Pops. I'm cuckoo for Cocoa Pops. We're going to become cuckoo for Jesus in March Madness. We're going to do some all night tarries or some tarry services and we're going to do some fasting. So keep your calendars open for March Madness. I know that the colleges be doing their thing, but the church is going to do their thing in March. Hey, man, don't y'all miss them tarry services? 
Don't y'all miss turning down our place? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so all y'all that want to take us to dinner next month, make sure it's not Friday night, because on Friday night, that's when we're going to be doing our thing. It's going to be March Madness, if God say so. Amen. But in the book of St. Matthew, the fourth chapter, when Jesus came off his 40-day fast, amen, the Bible says he would let the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And one thing the devil want to know, do you know who you are? That's what he want to know. Do you know who you are? Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't know who you are and whose you are, you're in big trouble. You're in big trouble. Once you realize who you are, we are heirs and we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. The Bible says there won't be nothing impossible for you. It's a personal thing. He was afterwards hungry, the Bible says, and the, and the devil came to him and tempted him. The Bible said the tempter came to him and said, If thou be the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. What did the word of God say? He said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So he knew where his strength came from. That's knowing who you are and whose you are. He takes him up to the pinnacle of the temple and say, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from this mountain, for it is written that his angels shall take charge concerning thee, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Because he is the living, walking word of God, and his word is forever settled in heaven. He said that thou shalt not die. The Lord thy God. Amen. Because I know who I am and who's I am, I don't have to be flamboyant about it. Amen. But I'm standing on the promises of God on this afternoon or this morning. Then he takes them to a very high seat of the mountain, shows them all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. He said, all of this will I give you if you would just fall down and worship me. Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan, because he knew that the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof the world, and they that dwell therein. A cattle and a thousand hills belong to God. And if I was hungry, David said, I wouldn't tell you. David declared, I was young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed back for bread. David knew who he was. Jesus knew who he was. I am the living word of God. And be you to tempt me with God's word. Hiya, my seer. He did not yield to the tempter because he knew who he was. We don't have to yield to the forces of darkness if you know who you are. <laughs> you don't have to yield to the flesh. It's when your mind is discombobulated and you, don't, you got an identity crisis. Save the day, not save this afternoon. Got faith today, don't have faith this afternoon. Got love today, don't have love this afternoon. Because you got an identity crisis. John Doe. Jane Doe. G.I. Joe. G.I. Jane. Who am I? I? My God, my God, my God. What's your name, son? No, it's not. It's, it's, it's Marcellus, isn't it? What do you mean? Uh, uh, I'm the bishop, and I says that it's Marcellus Anderson. What you say? Okay. <laughs> okay, let me go over here. What's your name, daughter? Yes, you. Lachey. Lachey, yes, your name is Lashonda Anderson, okay? <laughs> no. Why not? So it's not my name, Well, I'm the bishop. I'll just change your name. No. Why not? 
Because my name. Because <laughs> it's my name. It's my identity. I have a right to be blessed. I have a right to live for God. God has already given us our identity. We are the sons and daughters of God. That's who we are. If you believe it, you should give God a praise. Let's hold on. I don't care what power, principalities, spiritual weakness, and high places try to tell you anything different. You have to be like Lachey. My mom named me. My dad named me. I'm Shay Morton. You can, you can kidnap me, adopt me, whatever you want to do. But my name is Shay Lachey Morton. And nobody ain't going to change that until my husband comes. <laughs> Until my husband come, nothing's going to change. But, but, but a lot of times we change soon. The devil's coming and, and, and give us a hard time. Okay. We go back in the world doing what we used to do. Acting like we used to act. And that's why when you go to the club, you start dancing, doing a funky chicken, everybody else doing something different. They know you don't supposed to be there. You start drinking and everybody, you know, Everybody drinking, you preaching as you drink. Thus saith the Lord, repent for the kingdom of heaven is that hand. They know you ain't supposed to be there. They know, but you don't know. Hallelujah! It's good to know. It's good to know who you are and whose you are. The more you know, the more you walk in that authority who you are the more the devil will come in subjection to you. The more you will come into subjection to your own spirit because you know who you are and whose you are. Yeah, identity crisis. And people today are stealing your identity. Charging up your credit cards. Giving you, giving you a bad name. But the devil is a liar. Let him that stole steal no more. My God, my God, my God. I am who I am. I can be what the Bible says I can be. I can do what the Bible says I can do. And today, beloved, I am a son of the living God. And no weapon that's formed against me. They're going to be formed, but they will not prosper. Thank you. You can't take my identity. You can't steal my identity. You have it blind for 18 years, but he that the sun set free is free indeed. I'm free today. I know who I am. Who's your father? Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord my peace. My God, my God, who's your big brother? Jesus, Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. I'm a heir and a joint heir with Christ Jesus. That's what I am today. That's what you are today. And you have to start taking authority. You have to start walking in the authority that God has given you. You have not, beloved, because you ask not. And when you do ask, you, you don't believe that you're going to receive it because you got identity crisis. Oh. If your father can give you good gifts, can't God give the Holy Ghost to them to ask him? I want to leave you with a couple of examples of identity of people who had identity crisis before we close. If you look at the book of Exodus and you look at Moses, mm -hmm. Moses was like second in charge when he was in sin in the house of Pharaoh. He was a very powerful man. And one day the Bible says he went out and he seen an Egyptian smiting one of the Hebrew people, servants. And the Bible says that Moses, he slew that Egyptian. Amen. 
So according to the word of God, Moses was a murderer. Yeah, that's what Moses did, but that's not who Moses was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moses was a deliverer. Amen. Moses was the, the writer of he 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 was the was he was the, the leader of the, the children of Israel and he was also the servant whom God gave the Ten Commandments to. That's who Moses Yeah. But it took him almost eighty years for him to realize who he was. You know, sometimes we feel inside of us that we have a purpose, that we're supposed to be doing something other than what we're doing. That's how Moses felt. That's why Moses felt justified to, to, to kill the Egyptian. But God said, it's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by my spirit, saith the Lord God. My God, my God, my God. Moses' main name means one that's been drawn out of the water. God drawed him out in order to deliver the children of Israel out of captivity. And Moses had gotten stuck on what he did. He would have name it. It would never have came into the to the identity of who he really was. Let me say that again. If Moses had gotten stuck on what he did by killing that Egyptian, he would have never came into his full fruition of who he really was. He was the deliverer of Israel. Amen. In the Old Testament. We go on to David. The Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. God called David a man when he was yet a man. Yeah, this is what the Bible does. God speaks those things that aren't as if they are. God sees us not as we are, but God sees us as we shall be. It does not yet appear what we shall be. Shall be. Shall be. Shall be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my dad said I would never be nothing. But I had an honest hazel. She used to say, Frankie's a good boy. Yeah, I was doing drugs, but Frankie's a good boy. I was selling drugs, I was using drugs, I was robbing, I was stealing, I was doing all them things. But Frankie's a good boy. What we shall be. God sees what we shall be, John. What we shall be. Oh! If I had to stay what I was, my God, I would never became a father, a father, a daddy, a provider. If I had stayed what I was, what the devil told me I was, a gangster, so-called gangster. Hey Amen. You wouldn't see me in the house of God. I handle says, Frankie's a good boy. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But we do know that when he shall appear, he appeared one day. He appeared to me one day on my road to Damascus. When I was up on my high beast, amen, he had to knock me down and appear unto me. You canvass this place. We that are in here, must have had the same kind of lives. Must have wasn't knocking up to nothing. But God seen the best in us. He made us, he made us sons and daughters of the most high God. That's who we are. David, you're a man after my own heart. David committed adultery. David, you're still a man after my own heart. David killed Uriah's Bathsheba husband. David, you're still a man after my own heart. Why was David a man after God's own heart? He picked up the 51st Psalm and he began to, to pin against thee and thee only have I sinned. Oh God, created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Then will I teach transgressors your way and sinners shall be converted unto thee. And God, whatever you do, don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. If God says that you're a man or woman after his own heart, 
I don't care what the devil says. Yeah. He told Peter, upon this rock, upon this truth, upon my word, I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. David was a man after God's own heart. I love David. Amen. He's a man that I can relate to. He's a man with shortcomings just like I have shortcomings. Amen. But we're going through our metamorphosis, men and women, sisters and brothers. We're going through our metamorphosis. And the, and, and the more you surrender to the process, the quicker you'll go into your destiny. Amen. The more you reach out on faith and says, I am what God says I am. I can be what God says I can be. And I can do what God says I can do. Amen. The moment you stand on that truth, it'll give you liberty. Give the Lord a praise. Church. Amen. Beloved, rest upon your feet. Ah. 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 I guess we don't do it. Whoa, yeah. Amen. But we need God to strengthen our hearts. He was talking to Peter. Peter was like some of us. He told Jesus, I will never deny you. And Jesus told Peter that after the cock crowed three times, you're going to deny me. Amen. Twice. Amen. Peter denied him. <laughs> that's what he did. But that's not who he was. We all have bad moments, don't we? <laughs> Get over it. Get over it. <laughs> Amen. Forget about it. Jesus looked at Peter and Peter, he wept, went out and he wept bitterly. I denied my Lord. Amen. He was messed up. But you know what Jesus told Peter? He says, Satan desired to sift you as we, Peter. He's trying to take your identity. Yeah, but I pray for you. I'm praying for you, church. That's what holds us together every week. Amen. We pray for one another. We pray for you, Erica. Yeah. The heart of the fire means the pure the gold. The heart of the fire means that the trial is almost over. Yeah. That's that's what that's what that means. We we we're in that bed, and God is stirring the trouble up, so that He can see Christ, so that we can see Christ once we look into that pot of gold or silver, whatever it may be. God is purifying us, and I'm here to say today that the storm is almost over. It's a bad road that doesn't end, but God sees. He would be unjust not to look out for his folks. But you have to stand on his promise. You have to stand on who you are and whose you are, regardless what comes against you. Amen. If I could have another song, I would say after you've done all, you're done. Just stand. Uh. Just stand. <laughs> the good thing is that when you just stand, you're not standing alone. What? That's the good thing about it. I love being saved. I love being a Christian because I know I'm not alone. It's good. It's good to serve the Lord. Yeah, it gets hard sometimes. We're going through the process. But hold on, church. Just hold on. 
The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Just hold on. Just a little bit longer. God is in the building process. Yeah. He desired to sift you as we. But I prayed for you, Peter, that your faith fell not. But after you are converted, Peter, I want you to strengthen your brethren. After you get yourself together, Peter, I want you to strengthen your brother. Because, Peter, you got a bad temper. And I got to teach you how to be humble. For the servant of God must not strive, but they must be gentle. Peter, you got some things in your life that have to come out. But just hold on. I, I see Jesus being crucified for your sins and for mine. And not only did he die, but he rose again from the dead. And when he rose from the dead, he appeared unto the disciples. And you know what he said? He says, tell my disciples and Peter. And Peter. God will never forget your labor of love. He see when you came up here today and you sang the songs of Zion with a heavy heart. Yes, so much. Show. This is an all seeing eye that's watching us. Yeah. That's the good thing about serving God and not serving man. Man can't catch it. But tell my disciples and tell Peter. Whatever you do, tell Peter to meet me in Galilee. Tell Peter to meet me. Meet me. Meet me in Galilee. I got a job for Peter to do. Yeah, he come Pentecost, church. On the 50th day, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were in one place on one accord. And the Bible said there came a sound from heaven as of a rush of mighty wind. And it sat upon each of them. And they began to speak. My God, those things that are as if they were. They began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit of God gave utterance. You are not a failure. You are not a drug addict. You are not a prostitute. You are not a loser. I'm a winner. I'm a winner. I'm... I can't lose with the stuff I use because God is on my side. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Pentecost was the birthing of the church. <laughs> but anytime you got birth, you got pain. You are... We're going through a pain Perfect process right now, Shiloh. The people came into the house of God. See these hurt these folks speaking in other tongues. They said these men are drunk with new wine. Out of the crowd of 120 apostles, disciples, came Peter. Peter mounted the platform. Amen. The devil said, you a coward, you deny Jesus. Peter said, I don't care. I got something to say. You deny the Lord, I don't care. I can't. Yeah, I repented. I, wept. I went out and I wept bitterly. I got something to say. See, the devil want to keep you in guilt so you can shut your mouth. But you need to tell the devil, I got something to say. <laughs> And what he said came prophetically from the book of Joel. He said, these men are not Trump, as ye suppose, being it only the third hour of the day. But this is that. This is that. This is that. Which was spoken by the prophet Joel. That how in the last days God will pour out his spirit upon our flesh. And how your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Upon your servant 
and upon your handmaids will I pour out my spirit, saith the Lord. Those that were in the case from different parts of the nation, they asked Peter a question. Peter, what must I do to be saved? He said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, and thou shalt receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 3,000 souls were added to the church on that day because what I did wasn't, was, wasn't was who I was. What I did did not make me what I was to become. Yeah, I denied him, but really, I'm a soul winner. I'm a rock. Amen. I got the keys to the kingdom. And whatsoever I bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever I loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. I am what God says I am. I can be what God says I can be. And I can do what God says says I can do. I am a son of the living God. Come on and praise him. Hallelujah. Glory to the Because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. If that one today, come on, come on, hurry on down to the altar. Our heart. Woo! My mind, oh, sir. my soul is gone to you. You paid the price for me. You paid the price for me.